I've started watching Star Trek Picard, first episode, and one thing that's kind of struck me is just the opening credits. It's a, what kind of thought process goes into assembling this? They had three regular cast members, one guest star, and then it's all production people. Normally, any typical show, but let's just say the Orville as an example, so, so a similar show. You list your opening credits will be the cast, and then generally it's like you know, maybe the executive producer or you know created by. Something. But they're going into. Let's just get back in here. Hold on, let's back it up a bit. And we're going to. She's got the flash of uh, John Luke. There'll be something, and then. Lens flare, of course, it goes to a lens flare. And she's looking wide eyed, like, oh my god, the revelation. And then we go into the thing, here are the graphics. Crack in the sky, whatever they mean. Starring Patrick Stewart, Allison Pill, Lisa Briones, and Tara Harris. So that's four regular cast members listed. And especially guys start Brent Spider. And then we're into credits that normally wait until the end credits, you know. Who cares who edited it? You know? You know? Costume design. Then who cares? Edited by you know, you know, it's a, you know. Production designer. Director for the uh, photography. Consulting producer. Now we're into producers. That's you know. That's two you know, three producers. Four producers, you know, supervising. Five, how many is it supervising producers to supervising producers? One show when you think. That's six, seven I mean executive producer, I don't know. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's discovery all over again. Fourteen, Patrick Stewart. Fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, only oh, he's gone. Eighteen producers. The producers outnumber the cast two to one. Okay. But you want to talk to you know produced by committee? This is it right here, guys. I mean, so far, I, I, I appreciate the slower pace and the, you know, they seem to have done a better job with Davis' hair, you know, Davis' hairline, which makes, makes me wonder if it was all CGI to begin with. But, you know, we're going to get back into this and we'll come back later. Yeah, you know, hoping this thing is actually running. Uh, and not to the point where they need to get it. the review reaction thing. Spoilers right up to the top here. Uh, Still begs the question. It's like uh, the Robin Lennon, but yes, it's it's tragic them losing the home world, but it's just one world in a pretty big empire. Then why would the Romulans need our help to begin with? They have ships of their own. They have other worlds of their own. So <clears throat> it kind of begs it still begs the question: what, what kind of premise are we starting here in the first place? I mean, yeah, it, 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 it gets nice. He's got a, apparently a Romulan couple working for him in the house because they're far too emotional to be Vulcans. But, uh, yeah, we're, 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 you know, off to a weird footing already. And this, and this reporter's really going for the, the aggressive thing right off the bat. So it's like, I think that this interview's over. And again, we're given a number of 900 million. That, on a planetary scale, that's kind of chump change. We got, you know, like, I think last year, about 8 billion on this planet alone. 900 million is not even the population of China. So, I, I, you know, again, the, the scale is hardly worth a Federation wide response 
and it's also the, the Romulans can't do this themselves? Are they settling without ships and planets? There's a problem with the premise here, okay? Okay. Flammable vapors in the atmosphere. Uh, Mars. Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere to begin with, and most of it's carbon dioxide, which isn't very flammable. And they didn't really indicate that Mars has been terraformed a whole hell of a lot. What the hell are they trying to pull here? They're forgetting that this doesn't... Okay, Alex, the rest of you. Star Trek's audience is not a bunch of dumb kids. One, they're a bunch of very smart kids, but also you generally have NASA scientists in the audience. Guys whose daily commute takes them to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And then, and then the Neil Armstrong Rocket Test Center in Huntsville, and then, you know, Kennedy Space Center. People who work at MIT, you know? Scientists, people who know this stuff and know that you're stopping crap from the first second you, they hear it, okay? This used to be a very smart show. It's getting very, very stupid very quickly. So, yeah, if you have a scientific advisor, I suggest you listen to him. Or if he's feeding this crap, fire him. Bring back Andrew Bormanis. I know he's talking about. Okay, Patrick Stewart does a good job as always, but then he'd do a good job reading the phone book, so. Starfleet withdrew. Again, they're not really thinking that through. Just like they didn't really think through that the Romulans couldn't muster their own ships right there. You'd think there'd be enough ships at, you know, at Romulus itself to say, okay, we got something going here. Beam up. You know, start beaming people up. At least the Senate. The Predator. You know, just but, uh, the stupid thing is like, you know, thinking the Federation is just Earth. The Federation is at least a hundred, over a hundred members, by this time, well, 200 members, member planets. Uh, how do you withdraw? You pull back from the border and just let the Klingons and the Romulans just, okay, we'll just take this one. We had this eye on this one for a few couple centuries. Let the Gazinti wake up. Ooh, nobody's here. Mine! You know, they're cats. They do that. No, 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 no. What the hell's withdraw mean? Come on. Yeah. I do greatly do the criticism of the, you know you don't have heard of Dunkirk and you have no idea history. Just wave goodbye. So, again, it's, it's Patrick Stewart doing a good job. It's not necessarily the writers doing a good job. So. I can do it. Let's talk a moment about the uh, apparently attempted. I don't know what the hell they're trying to do when the guys. Get, obviously, there's Section 31. You can see it's coming a mile away. Yeah. Let's well, do a sim crowd. Uh, could you think of a worse way to attempt a snatch and grab type thing? It's like, you know, you go in. First thing you do is kill somebody. Someone's gonna have to deal with the dead body, and you get the struggle and stuff right there. Like, you have transporters. Beam them out to a location where you can do what the hell you want with leisure. What the hell is this thing with the snipe and pop into the room and start a fight and break things and cause noise and attract attention? Kurtzman has such a hard on for Section 31, and he has no freaking clue how Section 31 operates, how it would operate, or any kind of covert operation. I mean, he's still thinking 20th century, you know, SAS, you know, snoop in, grab him and swing out the window. Thing. You, know, you have transporters. And probably better transporters than what Starfleet generally has, too. So. Stupid. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just stupid, and we're, and we're supposed to buy it. Okay. I mean, well, like the stupid is still stupid. One thing I do appreciate is the fact that they ditch the uh, big bulbous foreheads for the Romulans, make them look more like what they should be, like Vulcans, because they're the same damn species. That was one thing they get irritated how uh, next gen was they had to put 
felt the need to put big giant foreheads on the Romulans to make it look like Cro-Magnon. No, please. Okay, Data's back with the thing, and they have definitely fixed his hairline, because that was a glaring error of things, so they've gone back and tweaked this, obviously. Another nice touch. San Francisco looks like San Francisco again. It doesn't look like, you know, Coruscant. Thank you, JJ, you idiot. So, yeah. So at least, you know, Starfleet and, you know, that's it, it, returned to proper looking. Right? So. Okay, Starfleet Archives is nice and big and impressive, but also pretty, pretty unnecessary because you're just trying to access something. You can do that from a little alcove and a and a panel. What the hell's going back into this into the hardcore stacks for? Except it makes ooh look pretty blue lights. Yeah. Uh, by the way, one note regarding the model of the, of the stargazer in Picard's office, it was yellow. Don't know why, it was yellow and the number didn't match. So it's, I think it's basically it was just a model of a constellation class ship. It wasn't it wasn't really the stargazer, so. Just a little nitpick note. Okay, so in the Hall of Member Berries, we have a look at the, the painting uh, called Daughter. Okay, Daughter, Dodge, G. Connection? Of course it is. Pretty obvious. Christmas can't do subtlety. And the old let it slip, but then, you know, it's kind of, you know, hold on, hold on here. Let's pause that for a bit. Pause that, yeah. It's the old letting it slip. It's a, uh, All right, you killed him. I didn't stab anybody. Who's anything about stabbing? Ooh. It's like, yeah. Yeah, and... I mean, I'll, I'll grant the thing that she might... You know, the, the, the Dodge might not be that bright on things, but, uh, yeah, you don't think they'd be monitoring her communications, especially if she tried to call home. Yeah, that's, that's a Ricky move. And clearly Mom knows about the positron print. Yes, we, we know... You know the, Positronic brain thing was already leaked. And they're, they're going with it full bore. So she knows the code words. So crack it open too. Okay. Uh, the captain is figuring things out. He should not be able to figure out at this point, given what information he's got at this point. It's his exposition dump to speed things along and to figure they're, they're done a little too much here. Okay. And I think we're also starting to borrow rather heavily for uh, Blade Runner and maybe Terminator a bit, but mostly Blade Runner with the implanted memory saying, no, I was born in the... No, you were conscripted in a lab three weeks ago. That's what's coming up next, I think. But yeah, we're, we're, we're getting a bit of an exhibition, exposition dump here because, like, okay, we got to get the thing wrapped up here. Come on. Because you know, there's nothing... It, right now that he should be leaping to positronic brain thing because there's been no indication she's anything but organic okay so yeah he this should have at least been you know during the uh, when his uh, Romulan you know I don't know housekeeper or whatever the lady the lady Romulan was patching up her thing it should have been at least a little skin oh, this is interesting you know I mean Showed in the thing. She's got. She's showing a positronic brain. That that would have been enough. Just something, you know. But he's just pulling this shit out of his ass. You know. Oh, come on. Let's get back to it. Uh, I'd also like to remind uh, Kurtzman and the rest of them, and I'm sure Kirsten Beyer is well aware of this. Uh, the idea of Data having a daughter has been covered before. An episode called Lao. Okay. Now, imagine somebody at the casting office might have, because you know, there's a bit of a resemblance between uh, this gal and the one who, who played Lau in that in that episode. But th this is kind of well-worn territory. Okay, in fact, you really want to go <laughs> do a deep dive. Requiem for Methuselah. No, my, I'm talking about androids and stuff. You know, getting emotions. So. As much as they want to belittle the original series, oh, it was a very disembodied scene, and you know, the little quaint little thing. It's like been there, done that many times over, and better. And no, the ratings were actually very good for the original series. It was Rodbury they couldn't stand. So, but that's another issue. 
Yeah, chase scene ensues. I think running into the building would be a much better strategy where you might complicate some sensors than going up on the roof. Oh, clear shot. Yeah. Interesting, they seem to have borrowed the phaser design from uh, Star Lord and Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just kind of weird. Okay, we have now reached the uh, Dacia Institute in Okinawa. And I'd like to hear from somebody who's been to Okinawa because, frankly, the looks more like uh, Marina Del Rey or Malibu. Thing of. Does Okinawa have the cliffs like that right on the, right on the beach? But uh, the asking the thing of, uh, can, is it possible to make a sentient android of flesh and blood? That's not the kind of question I think it would provoke laughter, okay? So... That's a rather odd writing choice there too. So, it's just it's, it's just odd. Yeah, yeah, weird. Okay. <clears throat> and so the big reveal being okay, the Romulans are reclaiming this board cube, which I showed in the previews, and Dodge's twin sister Soji is part of the team doing it. Okay, well now we know she is. And okay, fine. How they managed to get a board cube disabled and naturally you they could they you know they'll start tearing it apart and find what they what can do with it. No problem there. This Romulan guy that walks up to her it seems a little bit of pasty face, but you know it could be the lighting. But because I mean, you know, the other two Romulans at back at Picard's place look fine. The yellow and all. So and I guess it's a coming up you know, the, who knows when we're gonna see any of the that showed on this on that trailer, because you know, as it first three episodes apparently take place all on Earth. So, <sighs> so we shall see. But you know, that, run into the dangers of doing the slow and more dramatic thing is you are able to step back and say, "Hey, wait a minute! What? 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 This doesn't make any sense." Because you know that's the danger you run. That's why JJ doesn't do it. And that's why he goes with breakneck speed. So you don't have a chance to sit back and realize that what you're showing, what you're watching, is bullshit. Yeah. Now this one, you can sit back and they, they wait a minute. Why are we helping the Romulans? And they, they, can they suddenly not help themselves in this? And and why are they, why are they doing this? Why don't they just beam them out of there? You know, and have their way with her in, 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 in a secure location instead of you know causing all kinds of mayhem. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, this is typically why the, the thing got just a low rating in the, in the uh, screening and the premiere thing. So we, we shall see how it unfolds here, but... Yeah. Well, that's Star Trek Picard so far, so... PayPal, Patreon down below. We'll see what's going on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.